So first of all, let's make sure everybody realizes we're in three suited Levinsall territory. Uh, the con criteria for that is basically uh, a non-competitive auction. Uh, there is one exception to that, which I'll discuss later. But basically, the opponents have been quiet. And we have shown three different suits, real suits. Uh, and the suits can also be shown by inference. Uh, here it was very clear uh, which three suits. We have uh, both majors by David and diamonds by Eliana. So the last condition, which is very important, is the bidding must be at the two level for us to be in a three-suited Levinsaw situation. So uh, Eliana was in a three-suited Levinsaw situation after the two-heart bid. Uh, there's multiple things she can do. Uh, one of those is a fourth suit forcing bid, which is what she did. Uh, what's unique? To uh, OCP is we have uh, a different version of fourth suit forcing and the fact that we plug Levinsaw in it. So we actually have fast and slow bids. Uh, this was a fast fourth suit. So what that's asking basically is David to better describe his hand. And one of the biggest priorities here is if he has a fragment to show it. So if you look at David's bidding, uh, if you're looking at it from Eliana's standpoint, where you can't see his cards, you can just see his bids, uh, you know he has a five card uh, spade suit and most likely a four card heart suit. So that takes care of nine of his 13 cards, which means there's only four cards left between the diamond and club suit. And one of the things about this inquiry bid which is a fast four suit, is it want, uh, the person who's asking really wants to know if those remaining four cards are split up like 3-1 or better. If they're 2-2, two, two, which means they're sort of like equal, it's not as distributional as other possibilities, uh, the response tends to be three no trump. And that would tell ask her, hey, I really don't have a fragment. My remaining four cards are basically 2-2. Two, two. So in this case, uh, David correctly showed he had a three-card uh, fragment in diamonds. So the important inference here is now Eliana knows exactly probably David's distribution. Five spades, four hearts. She now knows about the three diamonds, which also implies David has only one club. And that's pretty important because when Oliver talks about asking bids, uh, you can use that as a short beta ask and get into some slam territory. Now some other options here uh, beside four suit forcing, which is forcing the game, would be uh, after the two diamond bid and two heart bid is uh, the quick raise of either of opener suits, hearts or spades. Uh, that is game forcing. Uh, in the system, and this is optional, and I don't know if Oliver went through it uh, on the notes, that would be a beta bid by raise, uh, uh, giving a direct raise to one of opener suits. Uh, which is base, a beta bid is basically the equivalent of a Roman key card bid, except it's not only asking for aces, it's asking for kings too. Uh, so there's a couple options here to do, but this is bid perfectly fine. Uh, slams here. Uh, it's going to rely on the queens being on side. So one of the ways we could do it, obviously, is after David's three diamond bid, since we know there's a shortage in club, four clubs by Eliana would be asking basically for controls. And that would be a normal beta bid. We call it short beta. 
but I don't want to jump into that because I think that might be more confusing to people. Uh, let me think of other options here uh, with her hand. Uh, she has a game forcing hand. I, the way she bit it's perfect. Uh, the other option she could have done was after showing her diamond suit, that's a good way to go. Uh, other options would have been the forcing one no trump and then doing one of those gamma bids. So a couple options here, but that was bid fine. Is there any questions? No, a fragment is just three cards. So Joe, the the premise is since the person has shown two suits, there's only uh, four cards left, and we're assuming the first suit is five cards. That leaves only four cards left between the two other suits that he hasn't said it or she hasn't said anything about. And if you have a fragment, it's just three cards. Well, three clubs is four suit forcing. So one of the things could be uh, she obviously a singleton club is more helpful to Eliana's hand than a doubleton club. It also allows Eliana to consider playing it in diamonds. Because not only do we have a spade fit, we have a diamond fit. So now we have a, more of a strong hand. I think most people uh, would play uh, forcing one no trump here, but of course that would not be three suited eleven so. So this is just another way. We have a multitude of ways of bidding slam when partner opens one of the major. So this is an alternative approach. Do you guys want to try to bid uh, with the short beta just to see how you're going to end up in slam? And then after that, I'll claim, and then we'll move on to the next one. So here, and we should alert our bids. So four clubs here is short beta. That's the equivalent of asking for aces and kings. Now, when we do a beta ask, the way we respond as responder, the way David's going to respond, is he's going to use a step response. So four diamonds would be the first available step, four hearts would be the second available, four spades the third available step. And those are considered steps. The first step is going to show zero to two controls. The second step is going to show three. Uh, the third step is going to show four. And we count an ace as two controls and a king as one. So we're going to let David uh, give his response. And then I'll show you if you're looking from Eliana's standpoint how you can. So four clubs is short beta. And I don't want to confuse anybody. I just want to show you another version. So four hearts is two steps. You could look on the web notes under beta and look under the normal beta scale. That's showing three controls. And there could be three possibilities here, or two possibilities. Uh, since an A shows two and a king one, David could have three kings or he could have an ace and king. If you look at Eliana's hand, both of those combinations are possible. David could have the ace of clubs and some king, or he could have the
King of Diamonds. Thank you. Uh, uh, she's going to have to take a flying leap here because if it's uh, the Ace of Clubs, then we're missing the King of Diamonds, King of Hearts, uh, King of Spades. It may not be too good. Uh, so one of the things is she can convert to uh, qubiting from here because we're not in what we call an asking bid sequence. Because David's not going to know when, if she does another control asking bid whether it's a Trump asking one or whether it's a side suit because David doesn't know what Trumps are yet. It could possibly be diamonds, it could possibly be spades, it could possibly be hearts. He doesn't know. So the best bet is to start qubiting and just showing controls here. And the way to do that is uh, Eliana is probably going to bid uh, four spades. And hopefully David has his brain cap on and, and he will know. He gave a sort of good response. It wasn't a minimum of it should continue. Eliana is uh, going to know wh where she wants to stop for slam. Now this is going to rely on good partnerships. David might say take that as maybe that's where Eliana wants to stop and he could pass and you can't get mad at partner about that. But she's shown a pretty aggressive hand here. So he can show he, he really he knows or she or he knows she knows that he has a singleton club. He if he bypasses that suit, he's going to deny it. The best thing to do here is what we call a rolling uh, qubit, which would be for no Trump. All that's saying is, partner, I can't have, I don't have a first round control in clubs. So uh, I'm bidding off. Now, if Eliana really wanted to stop in four spades, she could just bid five spades here, close it down. That would close down the auction. If she wanted to continue it, she could continue it by bidding five diamonds if she was interested in continuing it. So that should give the signal to David pretty loud and clear that she's interested in slam. Uh, she knows about the singleton there. Now some people play where if you're above game level you have to show first round controls. You'll find Oliver's system is a little bit more flexible than that. Now, if you bid five spades here, that would probably be a sign off. Yeah, you're going to probably have to bid your slam. Now, so there you are. Well done. John, the um, Sandia question is important to realize when do actually agree in our trouble. 
But you, you're basically taking control there. So you're going to have to make the flying leap there. So am I the only one who knows? Yes, that's, that is true. David's just showing you controls. So you got to watch out. You don't you get in a situation out. where he might think you're still qubiting and really you want to sign off. Okay. Yeah, th there's many ways to bid that slam in the system. Probably the very easiest one is forcing one no Trump. Where after David shows uh, his two heart bid, after the forcing one no Trump, she's going to bid uh, three clubs, which is gamma for spade. That puts you in the asking bid sequence. It, it it agrees that spades are trumps, and then you could do an ace asking bid called a relay beta, and then you could actually do side suit epsilon bids. So with a known loser, going back to the uh, last hand, with a known one loser in club, uh, you're relying quite a bit on finessing there. So if you look at the probability of it, it, it probably is a terrible slam, as someone suggested. So a couple things here. Uh, first, does everybody see that it's a three-suit 11 salt situation after South's two-club bid? So we could use the system's uh, four-suit forcing bid here. Uh, this is going to be one thing you got to be cautious of. And that's raising your own suit. If you raise partner suit and you do it fast, and it doesn't matter whether it's just first or second, both of those are forcing bids. In fact, I would encourage you to play them not only as forcing bids, but 
uh, play them as range beta. What range beta is as opposed to regular beta. Uh, it has another step added in the very beginning, and it basically says uh, if you use the first step, it's saying, partner, I'm at the minimum of my point range, which means 11 to 12 points, possibly 13. If he bids any other step, it's showing controls, and it's also at the same time showing he has a maximum range hand, which means 14 or 15 points, or a good 13. I would think uh, it's the only place in the simple system where range beta uh, occurs. It occurs when it's a major suit opening and you're in a three-suited Levinsaw situation, and when you raise one of the openers uh, two suits. If you're raising your own suit, that's basically an invitational bid. It's not a forcing bid. So if you really want to do a forcing bid here, you're going to have to do force suit forcing. So Eliana, David could, could have possibly passed your three spade bid there. I'm your reading. You know why I bid it that way? Because I read the notes. And the example here is one heart, one spade, Two clubs, three spades, a hundred percent forcing set. Are you reading that off the web notes? Yes. Okay. I will certainly stand corrected there, Eliana. But I'm open to other. Correct. Sorry. No, I'm not talking. I'm trying to bring up the web notes. Just give me a second here.
just bear with me here a second. My computer, I had to reload. Uh, I'm trying to look at Oliver's web notes here. Okay, uh, I will I will stand corrected on this because uh, the web notes uh, does say that it's forcing the three spade bit. Uh, part of the rationale is uh, responder had the availability of a two spade bid to be used as a weak sign off. Obviously, the slow three spade bid would be a mild invitation. And I guess three spades is forcing there. So my bad. Uh, now let me answer some of the questions we have here. Now with our one major openers, uh, we don't have an alpha bid, which is usually a strong bid associated with most of our other openings. I think if it was a one diamond opening uh, north here would probably be uh, doing an alpha bid of spades. Uh, but you don't have that with a one uh, hard opener. So certainly we have four suit forcing, which could be used here. Uh, three spades is fine, as long as that's a forcing bid. Uh, North can certainly bid over the three no Trump bid here. And what would be that bid? After the three don't come? Uh, if you wanted, you could correct it to four spades. I mean, you'd be willing to play there probably if partner had uh, void, I think. The other option is if you but use the uh, four diamond, suit. How do we get? Use, uh, uh, how do you get the slant? The slant. Yes.
I I really don't see one here. If you bid a new suit, Aliana, I think David's going to take that as you having another suit and probably like a 6-4 hand. No, South has not said anything about whether he has upper or lower range. We just know he has 11-15. He has a five-card uh, heart suit and probably a four-card uh, club suit. Well, let's move on to some, some others. These are all not clear-cut. I throw a little quiz out there to the group. I can't be the third suit here. That that's correct. Normally, you're not going to bid uh, one no trump here. What that normally shows, Eliana, is you had 13 to 15 high card points and a one no trump opener type hand, but you cannot bid it because of the vulnerability. But if you look at your hand, you got two double fins. So your choice is really to give partner more an accurate description of your hand, or either two diamonds or two hearts. If you're upper range, you can bid two hearts. If you're not, you have to bid two diamonds because you're you're basically uh, doing a reverse.
Oops, I'm sorry. Let me back up to that. I'm going to have to change the deal source, come right back in. So let's pre-bid it, one diamond, uh, one heart, or excuse me, one diamond, one space. So you can bid two hearts here because you're upper range. So you can bid two hearts. Yes, and that's showing upper range. You got 14 points there, I believe. Okay, so here, I just want to point out to people, even though one diamond doesn't say anything about the diamond suit, we are in a three-suited Levinsall situation because the two-heart bid, which is a reverse, guarantees that she has a five-card diamond suit. So eleven three suit eleven saws on at this point of the auction. Before we discuss this postmortem, I just want to put this up and see what the group thinks here. Anybody want to take a guess what two clubs is there? Okay, well, I'm going to ask some questions, and hopefully that will clarify some answers. The one diamond bid by opener, does that show a suit? That is correct. So basically, we've only shown three suits here. So two clubs cannot be for suit forcing. The other reason why it's not is because after one diamond, one heart, and one spade, the bidding's at the one level still. To do four suit forcing, the bidding has to be at the two level. That's correct. Two hearts, when opener bids two hearts after one diamonds, that specifically shows a five-card diamond suit and a four-card heart suit. But we do not know that until the two-heart bid is made.
And I'm going to show you one other thing here, and I'll type it so it's more easily seen. Is, are we in three suit or eleven saw there? Which means has three sh suits been shown? And are we at the two level? The one diamond opening could be a little tricky, and I just want to make sure everybody's on the same basis. You're correct, David. Because two hearts here is still reverse, showing a four card heart suit, five card diamonds, and upper range. Now let me, I'm going to add one other one. And this is not to confuse you, it's just so you get this wired down. Are we in three suited eleven saw? Yeah, that's correct. I'm not trying to just uh interrogate the people at the table. I'm trying to convince you are welcome also. Sonia, I think, has thrown a big clue out there, and I hope people can see the difference between those two bids. The answer is no. Three, that second sequence, 3 suit 11 saw, is not on. This is the reason and the difference between the two sequences. In the first sequence, one diamond, two clubs, two hearts, that is a reverse. If you had a minimum hand and what weren't able to reverse, you could always bid two diamonds with that hand. Now look, compare that to the second sequence, one diamond, two diamonds, two hearts. If you have a minimum hand, you can't show it. So two hearts is not a reverse in that second sequence. Two hearts is basically just showing some no trump stoppers. Because one diamond, two diamonds is a forcing sequence up to two diamonds. Or excuse me, to two no trump. Hopefully that makes sense. And let me read some chats here. Yes, originally Eliana bid one no trump, one diamond, one spade, one no trump. That's really misleading your partner as responder. He's going to think you have a one no trump opening hand that's 13, 15. Uh, four, uh, five, four, two, two, two is not a one no trump opening hand. 
So the correct bid is if North, in this case, had a minimum hand, which means 11, 12 points, she would have bid two diamonds. Doesn't say anything about the heart suits, just showing she has five card diamond suit. But the fact she's upper range, she could do a reverse by bidding two hearts, which shows not only four card heart suit, but is promising the five card diamond suit. Well, there's a, there's a couple reverses. The one diamond opening, if you open one diamond and then go to either two hearts or two spades, assuming partner has not uh, made a two diamond bid, that's going to show a reverse. We also have high reverses, which is just a jump showing a second suit, which shows a 5-5 five five hand in upper range. Absolutely not. Esther, what's more, what tells partner more about your hand? A one no trump bid or a two heart bid? A two heart bid showing upper range, four card hearts, five card diamond. A one no trump bid doesn't say anything about hearts. Basically shows a balanced hand that you cannot open one no trump because you are non vulnerable. And I'm not wrong in it. You could put it on the form. I'll put my house up as a lien. Could you bid one no trump there? Yes, but it's a poor bid. You're hiding a reverse. You're hiding a four card suit that you could easily show. So let's go let's go see some other options here for David. Because David, she could have uh three card spade support for you. So let's back up. I guess we just moved on. But David could have done a fast suit forcing. You're going to end up in three no trump because her two unknown suits were two two. But if she would have bid uh, three spades there, you would have been very happy knowing she had a three spade fragment. Eliana, you're doing great. This will be the last hand. We'll get some more folks sitting down. Okay, I can sit forever.
Low hand. Bid your fragment. David, could you write down the distribution that Eliana has? Absolutely. Great. So Eliana, he's doing a short beta on you. You have a total of seven controls. Yes, that's true, Sonia. It could be. But we're we're playing it under the assumption the suits for five four. And the main reason there is that shortage we could use for one of our asking bids. So what my skill is to show to... Well, was seven, what was seven? Seven. Yeah, so that's six steps, which is going to be four, uh, five clubs is going to be five steps. One complete raise of the suit is five steps. Uh, so you're going to end up bidding five diamonds here. Thank you. So David knows, if you look in David's hand here, uh, if you're trying to place those seven controls, you know one has to be a king. And it can't be anything else because David has three kings in his hand. So one of those controls is the king. That leaves six more controls, which are all aces. Uh, one thing I think we should mention here, because it's very awkward as you're finding out when you use a short beta and you don't have clear agreement on the Trump suit, it becomes very awkward once you get a response. Uh, if there's a reverse going on uh, and you do a four suit forcing, the implication is that there's heart agreement if you don't have an implied Trump agreement, you just want to be a little cautious using the short beta, unless you know you could jump uh, as a sign-off in your suit. And after five diamonds, uh, it's pretty hard. To, you have to jump, so you're going to have to jump to slam, so that could be pretty bad.
So any questions on this? Now, a better sequence would have obviously been a forcing one note trump by David, and then a subsequent gamma bid. But I don't want to confuse people because we really haven't. Uh, I think when we were doing major suit openings, we briefly dwelled into gamma ass. Uh, but I think that was just too confusing for folks. Yeah, it's much better when we have epsilons available, because lots of times we'll ask and avoid suit to see if there's any controls there at all, aces or kings. But here we can't do that because we don't have Trump. Asking sequences are not on because we don't have any Trump agreement yet. And it's not even an implied Trump agreement. OK, let's uh, get another pair out here. Did I miss any questions? OK, I, I'll take that advice, Tanya. Good job, uh, Eliana and David. Christina, no. I, I'm not sure who invented it. Uh, Oliver certainly uses it. The other thing I wanted to mention about 3 suit 11 saw, I, I tended, and it's tend to look at that it's only on. But actually, it's on when motor's on. So motor, if you recall, is when we open one of a major and the opponents do a takeout double. Three suited eleven saw can apply in there in certain situations, but that's the only competitive sequence I can think of. Also, it doesn't matter if you have a hand that is not limited. In other words, it doesn't have to be responder who's always doing the asking in three suit 11 saw. It could be opener. Many times with the negative opening to one club, <coughs> responder who has a limited hand of less than seven points will be in a situation to use uh, three suit 11 saw. The 11 saw sequences are all pretty much alike once you get your head wrapped around it. But it's not something you really have to think about the individual sequence you're in. One key thing I would recommend everybody whether they're raising partner suit or raising their own, is ask yourself the question, is it biddable at the two level?
So the easiest way to remember when your partner does a force, a fast force suit uh, sequence on you, which is asking you to further describe your hand. The first thing is look at those two other suits that haven't been bid. If there's a fragment there, show it. If there's no fragment, like 2-2, two, two, uh, ten, the tendency is to bid 3 no trump. Unless you have something else to say in your original two suits. Like, like for example, you could have had five hearts there rather than four. That was well done. Any questions on? Uh, I don't think there's a wrong side here too much because they're both pretty much uh, the same high card points. Not too much different. Is there any other options here anybody else can think of? I think you guys did a nice job of bidding it. So there's an alternative from Sanya. So normally I think uh, Douglas would probably take that as a six card suit if he did that. And if you were to bid three hearts, which is a, you're going to find out later, we haven't covered the opening two no trump multi opening, uh, would be an impossible bid because any five five majors that's intermediate strength is going to be opened with the multi uh, two no trump, which is really fun to play once you find out how to play it. Illegal for ACBL, uh, but certainly legal in VBO. Yeah, so I think we can move on to the next hand. That was good bidding by both Joe and Douglas.
Uh, well, if it's sponsored by ACBL, I think you got to use their uh, constraints. But other BBO tourneys, yes. You got to alert it, though. So I haven't been very strict in telling you guys to alert stuff that you should be alerting, and shame on me. I'll try to do that, Doug. Joe or Douglas, do either of you two have uh, the FDCC loaded? Yes, Joe, he is.
I I thought the bidding was superior here. <clears throat> but I really don't want to dwell into a lot of the uh, slam bidding, even though a lot of these are slamish hands. Uh, just because a lot of us hasn't been exposed to asking bid sequences. So the main thing is <clears throat> recognizing three suited Levinsall in your options. So this was, this was nicely alerted. Uh, we're certainly in three suited Levinsall territory after Joe's two club bid. Uh, three suits have been bid. We're at the two level, and <clears throat> Douglas decides to do a fast fourth suit uh, forcing bid, asking more about the distribution of Joe's hand. Notice that doesn't have to be done at the three level. It can be done at the two level. And I think uh, Sonia asked that question yesterday in Oliver's class, even though I missed most of it. Uh, the other thing to let you know, I don't know if Oliver discussed, and it certainly doesn't apply here, but in a three suit 11 saw situation, if you're at the two level and could bid the four suit at the two level, a jump to the three level in that same suit is saying something very specific. And what it's saying is, partner, I have a single 10 in your second suit. I do have three card support for your first suit bid on. Again, that, that allows us to use short beta. In this case, it allows opener to use short beta. And of course, he would only use that if he was upper range and uh, wanted to take leadership role there. I think I did mention that it doesn't have to be the unlimited hand who does the asking. It could actually be the limited hand that uh, does the forsuit, forcing. Now, four diamonds there, yes, is certainly a forcing bid. I would, I thought you wanted to start Q bidding there. Four clubs obviously would have added more confusion to the issue. So, Kerry, four diamonds is just wanting to start a scan, a control showing scan. So, you start Q bidding. The reason why four clubs did not start it is because uh, that could be mistaken as possibly a preference to Joe's club suit. Four diamonds should be unmistakable what it is. It's not high beta, and the reason it's not high beta, you really can't use high beta unless you have a Trump suit agreed upon. Unlike short beta, short beta you can use whenever you know they're shorted somewhat. Okay, we're going to move on.
Go ahead, Joe. Strange, I can see some of um, North's alerts and not others. Well, I don't think he's alerted the two in. Uh, I don't think you should be able to see your opponent's alert, Joe. I know, but I have no control over it. I couldn't see them in the last time, but I can see them this time. Don't know why. Well, we shouldn't be able to see our opponent's alert. Just ignore it. Yeah, Joe should now have your card that you use, Douglas. Okay, we're going to rebid this one, but let me open it up so Joe and Douglas can see the hands. So here, at what point in the auction does three suited Levisol kick in? We have been doing it where it always kicks in after our opener shows a second suit. In this case, it's Responder who has shown the second suit. So it actually kicks in after Responder's uh, two spade bid. So this is one of those unusual situations where it's opener who's actually sitting in the seat who can use three suited Levensol to better describe his hand. And there's obvious limitations to this. But two no trump here obviously must be Levensol. Because it's not artificial. We are we're in a three suited Levensol. So three three clubs was the forced relay there. Yes. When you see two no Trump pop up, you got to ask yourself the question: Is that Levinsall? If it's normally a natural bid, then indeed it's Levinsall.
So basically, if you ask yourself the question, the other option could have been a fast three heart. Which is stronger in this case? When you only have two options, a fast and slow, and there's no biddable suit at the two level, then in regards to raising partner suit, the fast is going to be stronger than the slow. So the inference is he probably has a better hand than minimal, and he has tolerance for your suit. So Joe, I think you want to back up there from four spades. That was probably a misclick. So, any other options here? What's the four suit? The four suit here would be clubs, which is a problem suit because we can't do a fast or slow qubit of clubs, or excuse me, bid of clubs. So the fast three club bid here would be four suit forcing, and it serves double duty. Uh, could be an inquiry, but most likely in a lot of cases it's asking uh, for no trump control. Yeah, Joe, if you put yourself, uh, let me make sure that both you and uh, Douglas can see the cards. Yeah, if you put yourself in uh, Douglas's uh, hand, uh, you probably want to play in 3 no Trump versus a, a minor suit contract, especially after uh, you've shown uh, both of the major suits. Uh, and if you're playing in no trump, you're probably worried most about a spade stopper. Oh, excuse me, yeah. Uh, what we needed to do here was bid a two no trump. Now, can't, if you bid a two no trump spades, that's just showing uh, uh, a weaker hand preference towards space. Could Joe uh, go with three diamonds here? Well, at this point, I think uh, two spades more accurately describes her hand, because it's a forcing bid from a responder standpoint. That is a reverse.
Two clubs or three clubs, Esther? I think Esther's referring to uh, Douglas bidding two clubs as opposed to two diamonds. Joe, if Douglas, rather than bidding two diamonds, would have bid three clubs over your one heart, how would you take that? Yes, Esther, if, if Joe would have bid two clubs, oh, excuse me, if Douglas would have bid two clubs, yes, then uh, we, we'd have three suited Levinsaw there. I didn't, that didn't come up, so I didn't discuss it. And so I'll, I'll discuss it now, because uh, it pretty much, uh, I'd say 95% of the OCP practitioners uh, practice it this way. If the bidding goes one diamond, one major response by responder, if opener comes back and bids two clubs, that usually implies a two-suited hand with both minors by opener. Specifically, it usually promises five clubs and four diamonds. In this case, I think it, it's misleading because it doesn't show a five-card diamond suit. Uh, but the mo most common type of hand you'll find with a one-diamond opener beside the opposite uh, vulnerability for no trump is the hands that have four clubs and, or excuse me, five clubs and four diamonds. So the other hand that it could possibly be that might be misleading is if you had a hand type that's for a two club opener, but it's a really ratty suit. Uh, it might have, it might have, uh, hide that type of hand. But even in those cases, if partner goes under assumption that's showing two suits and does a, a four suit forcing, you usually do, don't get in trouble. I see what you're saying there, but that's like seeing the hand and trying to work backwards into finding what a proper sequence is. And here that would work great. But two clubs after one diamond, one heart, I think is sort of misleading. In fact, what will you bid, Joe, if the bidding did indeed go one diamond, one heart, three clubs?
Yeah. Well, I think that would take you to the same place as what Esther is suggesting, is if Douglas bid two clubs, you could use uh, a fast uh, diamond bid to get you into uh, three no trump. That bid there, the three club bid, shows five five, and it promises an upper range hand. Normally, it adds more. You should have closer towards 15 points. This is 13 points, but most of your honors are in your two suits. So I think it's a viable alternative. No, you're going to end up in three no trump. What that does, Joe, is opener's letting you know he's 5-5 five, five and he, he's not minimum. So, so I, I think that's the option I would use, but I think the way it was bid was fine, too. And if you want to walk on the wild side, you can follow Esther's suggestion, too. Christina, I would just do a web search on three suited Levinsaw. Maybe Oliver did create it, but if he did, I'm not aware of it. I uh, generated a lot of these hands that I think if we had gamma over the forcing one no trump gamma, all you folks would be bidding it that way. Actually, uh, gamma and spades and gamma and diamonds are both interesting suits. If if we were playing it, the most the least expensive unbid suit would be gamma for the major. The most expensive unbid suit would be gamma for opener second suit. I don't know if we want to go down that road, we'll probably just mix people up with Gamma. But if you want to check it out, we have a nice, okay, I see Sanya, we do not.
So why don't we do a delayed game raise here, Joe? Once your folks know how to use gamma, forcing one no trump gamma is a very common bid. You'd be making a lot of slams holding just uh twenty something high card points. Actually, Joe, one no Trump would probably be the bid of choice, but since we're not, we're assuming you guys don't know how to use asking bids, we're going to take throw that out in the parking lot, even though that might be the best bid. Douglas, if you want to start Q-bidding, you can. That helps uh, Douglas make the decision easier. Yes, indeed. Can I suggest something maybe a little bit better bid than four hearts there? So Douglas's four hearts is denying uh, any type of controls in clubs and diamonds. Three no Trump here is a rolling three no Trump. Obviously, you don't want to put lay in three no Trump, and hopefully Joe will pick that up. And it's hopefully Joe will pick that up, knowing you want control 
showing scan to start, but you don't have a club control and you don't want to waste a lot of space. So three no trumpiers are rolling uh, qubit. Means you're lacking the control in the suit above. Yep. What else could it be? So how do I make the difference between the rolling and the real three no trumps? Uh okay, Joe. Excuse me, Eliana. Just look at the bidding. Uh Responder has supported Opener's major suit. Opener has supported uh, Responder's suit also. And since Responder supported Opener's suit after showing another suit originally, that's sort of like a delayed game rate. She bid three spades there rather than four spades because she has a stronger hand. So she's using the concept of slow arrival. Yeah, so there's no way in Tarnation 3 no Trump would make any sense uh, for Douglas to be wanting to play in unless he drank like 50 cups of wine or something. No, we're not going to ask about controls here. You're just going to show your control. Okay, Sonia's asked a very good question there. Why could it not be just uh, a suit preference as opposed to uh, a forcing bid? I just have to ponder that for a second. I'm trying to think of situations where a responder would be strong enough to do uh, a two-level uh, two level response and then come back and show support for opener's major when she could have done that from the get-go. Especially since Opener supported Responder's uh, original suit. I can say, Sonia, she cast doubt on it. And I can't give you a definitive answer. I'm certainly not an expert. I'm pretty good with the system. I got it pretty well wired down, uh, but the rest of me is not anywhere near expert level. So let's let's play it as uh, slow arrival, unless somebody can come up definitive, and we're all in the same agreement. And let's continue with the Q bidding. So four clauses appropriate. Okay, so Douglas is denying a diamond control, but showing a heart. Now, Joe, if you are also missing a diamond control, you would just bid uh, four spades here.
Also, David, uh, excuse me, uh, Douglas doesn't know whether your four club bid showed a second round control or first. So you could bypass the spade bid, four spades. Whoever does that guarantees that partnership has controls in all suits. You do not go to the next level of bidding unless you can guarantee that, whoever it is that goes past it. So in this case, you know you have controls and diamonds. You could safely bid five clubs. Now, Douglas here, I, w I would bid five diamonds, not because you have a first or second round control, but this is more in the style of Oliver. He knows that partner has promised a control in diamonds. By you showing a control in diamonds at this point of the stage, you've already denied a first or second round control there. So by you bidding diamonds here, you're showing partner you have a third round control there. Does that make sense? Because originally you, you denied having a first or second round. So if you're bidding it now, you're showing you have a third round control. You're keeping the queue bidding low. Partner, if they're awake, should not mistake that five diamonds for anything else but a third round control. Now, what your partner doesn't know, Joe, is that you have a control also in hearts. So even though your king is a second round control, you know your partner bid a control with four hearts. And you know that's the ace because you're holding the king. So let him know you have the king by bidding five hearts here. Yeah, five clubs showing a first round control. Four clubs showed a, a first or second round. It's also promising a diamond stopper. I don't get that, John. Why beating five clubs is showing the control in diamonds? Because your part, you can't go past four spades without that. Whoever decides to go past four spades has to guarantee that there's controls in all the other suits. North here denied a control in diamonds. The only way South can show that is by bypassing the suit because they not only guarantee a control in diamonds, they know the rest of the suits have controls in, either by their bids or partner's bids. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. OK. So at this point, Douglas, you should know that the five heart bid shows uh, a control in hearts that you didn't know about before. Florette, if uh, Joe bid four spades rather than five clubs, that's telling partnership that 
the di there's no control on diamonds, and we need to just stop. Yes, and that's why you bid uh, five no Trump there. That was an excellent bid, Douglas. Q bidding is really hard to do. It's something you need to discuss with partners. Uh, this here, Oliver, I think would be very happy with. It's just because there's a lot of inferences involved. Uh, for example, the five heart bid by Joe, even though she just had a second round control, uh, she's using the inference early. Uh, the five diamond bid by Douglas, uh, that's pure, like, you know, the, how the experts do it. <laughs> I used to just do it if it's past game level, it's only first round controls, but you end up going nowhere with that. And this way it's a lot more fun. But that's, we're supposed to be doing three suited Levin saw here. Sorry we're getting into these. And I, I apologize twice if they're more confusing for most people. So I'll, I'll try to explain it again uh, to recap if that might help some people in the peanut gallery. After South's three spade bid, that's showing Trump agreement. The three no Trump absolutely makes no sense to be a natural bid. If you look at the subsequent bidding, we have a major suit fit in spades. We're showing a fit in diamonds. Why the heck would we ever want to play in three no trump? So I think this is called serious frivolous three no trump in a lot of the other systems, but Oliver calls it a rolling bid. And all that is doing is saying, I would like to bid four clubs here to sh start a control showing scan, but I'm lacking a control. So I'm bidding three no Trump, letting partner know, let the control showing scan start. And normally you show, when it starts the first round, you show first or second round control. So uh, the four club bid here by South is showing either a first or second round control in spade. The four heart bid by North, since it skipped, you bid up the line, if you skip a suit, that's denying a control in that suit. Since four diamonds was skipped, North is saying, I don't have any controls in diamonds, but I do have one in hearts. So at that point of the scan, if South does not have a diamond stopper, they got to bid four spades, stopping the scan, saying, OK, we're missing diamond uh, stoppers or diamond controls. We just have to stop here. Because if we go on, the opponents are going to get two quick tricks and we're going to be down the tube. But she has a control on diamonds. She also knows she has personally a control on clubs. The assumption is we have controls in the Trump suit, of course. And she's been told by North that there's a control in hearts. So she can bid on, and what she does, she's bidding five clubs, showing, hey, I got a first round control in clubs. It's not a king, it's an ace. So after that, a five diamond bid, which is, I think, outstanding because North has denied a diamond, a first or second round control. So the question is, well, why the heck is he bidding a control in diamonds now? And it's because he's showing the queen. 
that may be valuable, may not be to South. South is saying, hey, I got a control in hearts I haven't shown you. Here it is. So she bids five hearts. Now North, who's interested whether maybe uh, South has the Queen of Trumps, bids five no Trump. That's another rolling bid. Of course, a lot of people could have bid six spades in North's hand at that point. But North, a little bit more aggressive, uh, better bridge player. So they're doing a rolling bid just to find out. And of course, uh, North denies everything. She thinks everything's uh, already said and bids six spades. So that's fine. Hopefully that was clear. But excellent bidding by those two. course, Joe. Excellent bidding. You guys can stay. Does anybody else want to sit? We'll try to stop uh, explaining the, the slam bidding and stuff. We'll just try to hone in on maybe uh, three suit 11 so. I can quickly glance through them. This looks like another slamish hand. But we won't bid on. If you just bid the game, that's fine too. So we have three suited lab here. Fast suit forcing? Force suit forcing, I'm sorry. Done fast. So you want to show a frag if you have. So when we talk about frags, we're talking about three cards among your two on bid suits. Okay, Douglas is trying for slam again. How about if we uh, just place the final contract? We're not going to try for any slam bidding. Because I think that's distracting on the others. Four diamonds is a good bid there, Douglas, but let's... Uh, that resolves the matter quickly. So that was partly my fault. I did not allow Douglas to explore the slam properly, although he wanted to.
<clears throat> uh, they seem to be a bit short of uh, Trump. Yeah, Joe, that was my fault. I was rather in, this is almost turning into slam bidding. I don't want that. It's turning into slam bidding of the type we normally don't use, which is control showing. Uh, and trying to explain that is almost as bad as trying to explain asking bids. So I'm trying to bring it back into just three suited eleven saw. So that was my fault. Douglas probably would have explored more appropriately and probably would have signed off in five spades, I'm sure. I'm going to do some read deals here to try to get some hands that are not so powerful. I'm taking that as a misclick. Okay, so we have three suit 11 saw. Actually, uh, Douglas's first bid was probably correct, depending on how you handle singleton kings. I think Oliver would agree with your two diamond bid there, but we'll just pretend we count the, the singleton king as a good three points. So we're in three suited Levinsaw territory. The two heart bid is guaranteeing four hearts, at least five diamonds, and it's also saying it's upper range hand. If it was lower range with the same distribution, the bid, w the appropriate bid would be two diamonds. Yes, non vulnerable.
Douglas, that's an okay bid. It promises a fragment in clubs. And indeed, the remaining suit only has a single 10 in it. But you might be more accurate to probably bid three diamonds, showing you have a six card diamond suit rather than uh Yeah, that might be a little bit more helpful. There was nothing wrong with uh, your other bid. So, Joe, you know between spades and clubs, uh, your partner only has at most three. So I think the bidding was pretty good there. Uh, we mentioned about uh, North Singleton uh, King. In this case, South also had a Singleton King. Uh, and some people maybe would not have valued that as uh, enough to make a two-level bid. So some people might have bid one spade with the South hand. Buy for it. I don't think that would have changed anything. Uh, the other possibility from Joe might have been a slow. Excuse me, David. No. I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, with Joe, instead of doing the fast four suit, do a slow four suit. Uh, you're pretty well assured that you're okay as far as stoppers and hearts and uh, diamonds, but if you're and you're certainly not worried about clubs, but if you're worried about spades, uh, you could bid a slow three spade bid, which is asking a partner to bid three no trump if he has control on spades. So that's that's one side possibility. Yeah, and you're in the right spot, Joe. Five clubs. So the way you did it, nothing wrong. In fact, you might have found a partner had a fragment for you in clubs, which you would have liked a lot. Yeah, that's one possibility, Douglas, which would be asking for a stopper in spades instead of asking about your distribution. And there was nothing wrong with showing a, a frag in clubs, although really uh, it's not as tough. I mean, in one sense, it helps a uh, partner know you're short in the other suit, which is spades. Uh, so there's nothing wrong from that standpoint, but it's probably better to show your six-card diamond suit. So
So great bidding by all you. Uh, next week we're not going to have it. Oliver's not going to have a class. Uh, plus I got a bridge tournament that day, so we'll we'll have it the week after that. So uh, keep practicing. Uh, have fun. Make sure you go to Rogers' uh, thing on Thursday. He's going to cover, I think, takeout doubles uh, and using Lebensall with that. See everybody.